Hi folks and welcome to the channel. Well, after last week's video about us hanging around in Chamonix for two days and going up and down mountains, it turned out I'd missed a whole bunch of video files on Bee's phone. So before we go any further on the trip, I present to you the lost footage of Chamonix. We gotta make our way to Chamonix this morning and hope that there might be some spaces in the camping car places there. We're gonna to have to pay. There is no air. There's air to service. There's air to repo. But there are no air to camping cars in Chamonix. So we are gonna to have to pay through the nose to stay there. And interestingly, we got when we bought the pass, we were immediately entitled to a multi-pass, which means that we can do other things on the day. Realistically, because it's only a one day pass on the Sunday, we'll probably only be able to fit in one other thing. So we've got our timed ascent in the middle of the day. And then maybe after that, we'll be able to do the train to the big glacier. But that, I don't know whether it's because we had a big party of five people, but Phoenix was free because he was a third child. Etienne's price was hugely reduced. So that's quite nice that they consider large families, but well, they call it their playground, which maybe be a little bit. I never get bored of these mountain views. They're incredible. Well, there you go. This roundabout is significant. And I shall tell you for why. That's what it was like, and that's what it's like now. So it's named after the man who discovered the hot springs here in 1806. Even the supermarket's kind of cute. Even though I have my issues with casino being absolutely overpriced. So I'm walking around this town. It's probably about half past eight in the morning. And this is what I found with a lot of French towns. It's super busy. I think when it's really hot in the summer, they make use of that morning and get out and about and do stuff because come 4pm it's too hot to do anything. Sammy can't get enough of these flowers, boxes, that's for sure. He's reading everybody's calling card, dropping off his own. Oh, sparrows in the fountain. It's very cute. Beautiful church, more beautiful buildings, beautiful backdrop. Doesn't get much better than this. Saint Gervais Le Bain, you are beautiful. Well, there's Saint Gervais himself. I don't know anything about him, so I have to go away and do some research. They've even got cool crossings here. So we're looking at this map of Mont Blanc and the mountains surrounding it and we did a bit of reading this morning and apparently it's four times the height of Scaffold Pike which is a mountain we climbed in England a couple of years ago or the highest peak in England so four times about four times the height. But the cable car only takes 20 minutes to get there whereas it took us about four hours to get up to <laughs> Yeah I don't think we'll be walking it tomorrow. I don't think we'd ever return. Oh, look at that cable car. Oh, another cable car. And a curb. We've arrived at the Catalan Mountain Store. We don't really need any mountain equipment. We literally just need a couple of pairs of trousers because Daz didn't pack any, and neither did Etty. Mind oh, you, the child has got an excuse. He hasn't. Well, I didn't know I was gonna go up a mountain. <laughs> Happy with those? Oh, hang on, there we go. <laughs> it's felt about as um, durable as the tights. Okay, here's a fun fact. We've just left the mountain store of De Casalon. Very nice big store. I've seen more British or English speaking folk in the Decathlon Mountain Store than I have seen on the entirety of this trip. What does that say about the British? We like climbing mountains? We like adventuring or we just like spending money and we like a good bargain too.
think Mont Blanc's a bit of a tease. Well, every now and again we'll see it. <laughs> Woo, snow! <laughs> <laughs> I phoned every single campsite around Mont Blanc in France. I even phoned one in Italy and she spoke to me in Italian and I replied to her in English and then I spoke to her in French and she understood my French and then she had a space and then Dad said, you've just booked a space in Italy. We are about an hour, hour and a half into sitting in this park for night camping space, which in the UK you'd be delighted with. I've got mountain views, it's beautifully warm, there's enough juice in the batter, look there's, there he is, snacking again, snack snack. <laughs> it's boredom snacking, boredom snacking. But behind that the kids are doing, kids are doing some gaming on the last of our power, so probably by the evening we'll have nothing left. But we're about a half an hour walk away from the centre of Chamonix and we want to go in and do the luge and the other fun things for the kids because tomorrow We've got our ticket book to go up to the Agui de Midi, which takes us nearly all the way up. I say nearly all the way, I think there's still a kilometre to spare. Nearly all the way up to the top of Mont Blanc. At the moment, we're feeling like we're in a bit of limbo. It's just something else. The clouds above it as well. I can't quite believe we're here. I think, uh, Daz, you put it quite serenely earlier and summed it up really well by saying it's surreal. It's like you're on a film set and in seconds, Someone's going to pull away the backdrop and it's just going to be a load of lights. Well, we've just been dropped off by the bus who didn't let us pay. And there's someone painting this amazing mural on the side of this tower block. So if you've got the Mont Blanc multi-pass or if you're staying in accommodation, you get a free card that entitles you to bus travel in the Chamonix area. We weren't parked in any of the, either of those things. We don't have a multi-pass today, we have a multi-pass tomorrow. And we're not staying in a campsite or in accommodation, so we didn't get a card either. We've actually just parked in a parking spot and we're hoping to move. So I assumed we were going to have to pay £15 to get on the bus, but the bus was so busy, I tried to pay and he just waved me to one side. So that was a bit of a result, but it does worry me because if we have to catch the bus back, then we might get charged 15 euros, whatever happens. And uh, we haven't won anything, so there's a part of me that thinks we should walk back. It wasn't very far. And then we've saved 15 euros. starting to regret this. It's going up very high. Ah. So we've had our luge adventure and now we're going to have a little drinky before we go and spend some jetons. Did you enjoy that boys? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> ourselves in a restaurant called Big Horn Bistro and Bakery and the reason why we're here is that I checked out Vegan Chamonix and there were so many vegan options in different restaurants including this one so we've come here specifically for their vegan crumble and it just so happens to have an American West theme which is pleasing to several folk on the table. Chamonix also offer a night bus service and we've been able to travel back to where our motorhome is for two euros each and the children didn't have to pay. It's 
That reason you sick. Because we don't know where we don't know actually know where our van is. having your dinner by a bin bag. Okay, it's just gone 8.15 and that's what we're tackling first thing this morning. And this champ is coming with us. So it's a military operation getting the kids up this morning, it's so early. They're not happy about it, but needs must. Fast, isn't it? Yeah, we don't get to do that, Sam, and I'm quite grateful. <laughs> well, just while Sammy and I are waiting for the guys who've gone up to the index near Le Praz, um, last night I opened up what the multipass gave us, and there are about 10 to 12, I'd say different things that you can do in and around the Chamonix playground they call it and the Chamonix Valley and there's even one thing that's in Italy as well so they say you'd need several days to do all of them but looking at the fact that we stayed near Le Praz last night it made perfect sense to walk 15 minutes down the road to get this ski lift and actually we've been able to do this at 8 in the morning or 8.30 in the morning and then we'll still be able to go into Chamonix and do our climb up to Mont Blanc this, um, this afternoon and we're hoping to fit in a little red train and maybe even an ice waterfall. They all seem to be in the proximity of the town, walkable distance, so um, it's certainly doable for our children. Um, but yeah, I didn't pay any extra for the multi-pass. So I simply went online to book the tickets to go up to, to as high as you can go on Mont Blanc, because I thought it would be a once in a lifetime thing for me and Daz, and of course the children might do it in the future. But it's nice to say they've already done it in their childhoods as well, and then we somehow managed to get the multi pass as well. So it might be worth checking that out because if you can do it in one day, you could probably fit in four or five things. And just seeing the kids' reactions this morning because they didn't want to get out of bed at eight o'clock or seven thirty or whatever it was, they really did not want to go, and they were all very upset about it. And they once they were on the cable cars and now in the gondola, and they were in the gondolas earlier, they just were delighted. It was amazing. So definitely a once in a lifetime experience. Gosh, so that's where they've all gone. I'm just reading about this area, the Via de Zavette. And yeah, this is a, a family climb apparently. And the minimum equipment that you need is a harness, two rope sections and a shock absorber, helmet and some carabiners. Hmm. Some people are very brave. There you go, Daddy. That's a bit of carpentry you could do. So we've returned from mountain number one, had some pizza toast, pop Sammy in, in a nice, cool, shady spot. It's just hard to believe all of those little colourful kites in the sky actually have people connected to them. So hot, oh my gosh. Won't, don't worry, you're going to be going up high, high, high in a minute and it will suddenly cool down. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of confusing, isn't it? It's a perspective thing. So we've done part one, now for part two. We've all chosen to wear trousers. We're trying to be super practical, but actually, still really hot. It's five degrees at the top. Yeah, I'm looking for. I feel like we're going to win when it gets to five degrees.
Well, that was absolutely petrifying. You can get to the top of Agriel de Medin, the cable car bangs to the side, and all I can see is sheer rock face facing me and kilometres behind me. And now I've lost my family. Oh my gosh. There are people hiking. So as well as being able to go to Italy via another cable car, there are other things you can do once you reach the top. And you're up here for two hours, so it's understandable they put other things in. I'm not an adventurous soul. So Daddy, this is um, grade one mountaineering here. So. Make your knot and uh, use your ice pick. Let's see you climb a mountain. These are a few of my favourite things. That's my um, hose pipe knot. <laughs> my timing. How the bees? I think that's it. I think don't drop your phone! Dad! Uh -huh. <laughs> So this resists corrosion. Good to hear. talking about how a mountaineer climbs these ridiculous mountains with with the crampons and the ice picks and the screws and the and the rope but this caught daddy's eye and look this is an increase in temperatures between 1900 to 2010 can you see that jump and it says here snow cover in chamonix has been halved in 40 years so these mountains will not look like this for too much longer. Right, we're in the queue for stepping to the void now, and we can't take videos or cameras into there. Done Felix. it. Yes, yes, yes. Our brave little man. Yeah, Felix, Felix has earned himself a, a euro because he didn't want to do step into the void, but he did it, and we've got some lovely photo evidence which we'll show for you now. first people to climb Mont Blanc did it in 1786 and they defied knowledge and superstition. Just read that there, it's really interesting. So we've come down now to specifically to go to Poco Loco, which we saw yesterday, and we saw that they sold vegan burgers. Actually, Chamonix for vegans is very, very good. We found the vegan crumble yesterday, and today we're having vegan burgers. It's brilliant. of scientific analysis of the murder glass apparently. Well what a day it's been from an 8am mountain call to getting stuck on the train <laughs> on the way back from the murder glass. Not murder glass by the way, glass that murders, mer, see the glass because apparently the two people that first saw the glacier wanted to name it thought it looked like the sea. We didn't see the glacier because it's the summer and the only way you're going to see the glacier is obviously we've seen the path 
that it's carved out into the rock. We could see that and all the indentations. But if you want to see the ice, you have to travel down the cable cars. And as soon as we got to the top in our train, our beautiful little old fashioned red train, apparently world renowned, uh, we saw the last cable car going down. So no ice for us, but we did touch some snow today. If you're prepared to really work hard, you can do quite a lot in 24 hours or in one day pass. But we perhaps set our sights a bit too high and we were a bit too ambitious. But my, my advice to you is to start early. So we're about to use some motorhome services in Mont Blanc, but we've, we've had our dose now and it's time to go. But interestingly, we tried to get into, we phoned up every single campsite to try and get a place to stay that had waste facilities, that had power. But actually, we've just spent two nights for free on a road that wasn't busy. Uh, we were opposite a house that wasn't inhabited and we had a motorhome join us last night and a couple of uh, other vans have joined us and yeah it was perfectly free anyway we're leaving chamonix now we were going to go by switzerland but there's a couple of things that we're hesitant on just trying to do some research and look at whether it's across the border and a couple of the things logistically that bothered me was that i didn't know what camping car airs are called in switzerland so i looked it up that brought up a wandering bird site and she said there's only about 100 in Switzerland and all spread out and I had a look and there don't seem to be any in the direction that we're sort of wanted to go. Plus, uh, there were people leaving comments like, well, and of course, there's the cost, but then it's Switzerland, isn't it? So it's, it could cost us a lot of money too. And we did go on park for night and there's lots of stuff on park for night, but to be honest, half of them were daytime parking, which is useless. The, a quarter of them were hyper restricted, so that's useless. And the other quarter was just hard to find or had mixed reviews. So it would be a real gamble, just logistically, I think, heading that way instead of just hanging around in France and going a long way around. And the other thing that we're hesitant on, apart from it being Swiss francs, but that should be okay because I can change it on Revolut. Um, Sammy has an animal health certificate, but since coming out to France, um, I've been looking on the Animal Health Certificate Facebook group that I'm part of and apparently there's another section that should have been filled in and stamped inside the Animal Health Certificate that doesn't pose a problem when you're in France but when you try and cross the border and go into another country it can pose a problem. But just before we do leave Chamonix one of the main camping car areas behind us which we saw from the cable car was rammed this morning but actually come the afternoon there was about five or six places. I understand it's a a euro per hour in there so 24 euros overnight no services but just outside next to the car for market is a camping car service point which was empty two seconds ago when we passed it but there's already got somebody on it okay. we've passed this before i think yesterday with about five vans all queued up ready to use the services so i'm sure we can manage with one and then we've got about an hour's drive to a camping car air in france but towards geneva I just wanted to get down there. I've just had two lorries really beep aggressively at us because we're blocking a road. Daz has driven into a lamppost and we've gone through a red light. This is what tiredness does to you. So we are now struggling to find anywhere to stay, having done a full day in Chamonix and it is exhausting. 